is 30 years of age now and is just 12, 7, and 4 because of the fact that he started out as a kickboxer and has really been a boxer only in the last several years. But he did win the IBF Featherweight Championship and he is an experienced, mature boxer. As we said, a very busy guy who will be all over De La Hoya if Oscar gives him the opportunity. Here is the young star of the Olympic Games, the only gold medalist for the U.S. team, 7-0, unbeaten thus far, and looking like he is headed to championships in several divisions at 5 feet 11. And his record from the Ring Magazine Bible of Boxing, as you saw, 7-0, De La Hoya is a guy that people are talking about now as the next Sugar Ray Leonard in terms of ability and his opportunities to roll up a lot of money and fandom all at the same time. The tail of the tape in this battle tonight, the 20-year-old De La Hoya against the 30-year-old Dorsey. The weight agreed upon for the fight, 133 pounds. De La Hoya came in a half pound over, and Troy Dorsey made it right at 133. It is effectively a lightweight fight. Scheduled for 10 rounds. Let's take a look at the tail, tail of the tape again. Dorsey is by far the busier fighter. De La Hoya lands a harder percentage and harder punches. Very similar to the other fight, Tim. It is indeed. How about in the jab department? I, again, Dor Dorsey throws more jabs, doesn't land the percentage that De La Hoya does, and it's not as snappy a jab. Well, these are Nevada rules with no title at stake here, but they are the same as the WBO rules in the last fight. The three knockdown rule, meaning three knockdowns in a round would end it. Count continues after the bell, except in the final round. No, I mean... Now uh, let's go up to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the pre-fight introductions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Top Rank Incorporated and Kentucky Fried Chicken, the boxing action continues. The officials assigned to judge this bout at ringside on a 10-point muscle from the Nevada State Athletic Commission will be Bill Graham, Davey Pearl, and Lou Tabbitt. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the bout is Mitch Halpern. And now, man, your battle station scheduled for 10 rounds. This is in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks and weighing in at 133 pounds. He's from Dallas, Texas and brings a professional record of 12 victories with 10 KOs against seven defeats and four draws. He's ranked by the IBF, and he is the former IBF featherweight champion of the world, Troy Darcy. His opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with gold letters, weighing 133 and one half pounds from Los Angeles, California. East L.A. to be exact. He brings an undefeated record of 7-0. Six by K.O. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the 1992 Olympic gold medal champion, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. That's referee Mitch Halpern who will work this 10 round fight. The judges are Bill Graham, Lou Tabbitt, and Davey Pearl, a longtime referee, now uh, acting as judge in this match here in the state of Nevada. De La Hoya in the white trunks, Troy Dorsey in the black. Troy Dorsey from Fort Worth, the stable of Dave Gorman, and fights a lot like a stable mate there. Gene Hatcher, now retired, former WBA champion. A pressure guy will come in and won't quit. He'll throw a ton of punches and keep pressure on you, and that's what we expect to see. And he's trying to get underneath the taller De La Hoya right now. Right, he's fighting in a crab-like style, Tim. He's trying to stay very, very low. Dorsey told us that De La Hoya had not seen anybody uh, like him thus far in his seven pro fights, and he feels if he can get him through the first few rounds that he can win this bout. And he's very respectful of the power of the young De La Hoya. For De La Hoya's part, he said this is the kind of fighter that he wanted to face. And he just rocked Dorsey with a left hand. I like that move of De La Hoya. He landed one left hook, little step to the right, and threw another one. Here we see the, the talent of Oscar De La Hoya. And already Dorsey is busted up. Over the right eyebrow, right on the corner of the eyebrow. It looks like a serious cut, Tim. And that'll 
run into his eye and make it difficult for him early. And now you can see Dorsey's trying to pursue, but you can see De La Hoya side to side. Look at him spin off the ropes out into the middle. It's a kid, it's him so far, I can't find any fault with him at all. He seems to have it all. Hey, look at that move. Dorsey at age 30 uh, in his boxing wars and no doubt in his kickboxing wars has been through this before. It won't bother him except from a vision point of view, but he has been cut. Well, Tim, I'm surprised that the uh, referee hasn't uh, stopped the fight to at least take a look at the cut because it is a serious cut. Dorsey was in a kickboxing match just about six weeks ago over in Paris, France, when he got the call saying he could have this fight. Tim, watch this lateral movement of Oscar De La Hoya. Beautiful, side to side, left to right. And now referee Mitch Halpern has stopped the action to have the doctor, Flip Homansky, examine the cut. Only the referee here in the state of Nevada makes the decision, but of course uh, he has the counsel of the doctors over there. I can go. Let him finish his round. I can go. You heard Flip Amansky say, let him finish this round. And I heard Troy Dorsey say, I can go. Talk about a tough guy. He is a tough guy. Dorsey's lost his last two outings, but he is in shape, as we said, because he was in full training for about against a 148-pound kickboxer, about he lost in Paris. Another good left hook by De La Hoya. And he is, look at those short combinations. Look at those punches. Dorsey trying to cover up and find a way to attack, now throwing punches. Keeping the pressure on, but De La Hoya not bothered by it at all. Well, you got to work in close. You got to get in close to him and, and get that to him You get inside. Yeah. You hesitate and just, yeah. they just let him go. Don't look okay. for a target. You got to turn him loose. Yeah, you're not letting him float. Go. I'm fine. You got a bad one, baby. You got you, you got to get in. You got to get him out in one or two more Close rounds. That's all they're gonna let us have. They ain't gonna give us much for you. You got to you got to get you got to get it over with this round. It ain't bothering me. Keep your eye closed while he's got that medicine in there. It ain't bothering me. Okay, take it off and let me see. Well, Tim, it shows you the punches landed. I didn't see Dawson not landing 26 me. punches in that round. Oh, Troy, you got to let your hands flow inside. Of that. Well, Dorsey's own corner telling him that it's a bad cut. And in fact, the referee, Mitch Halpern, is not going to let him come out for the second round. And so it is all over. Oscar De La Hoya with a second round stoppage as the referee, Mitch Halpern, does not allow Dorsey to come out. His own corner was saying to Dorsey, if you can't knock him out in the next round or two, they won't let us go any farther with this bad cut. So a tough break for Troy Dorsey, who was more than willing to continue. But Oscar De La Hoya was just going to be too much for this Let's take veteran the anyway. There's that left hook right on the right eye. And there's another straight right hand. Timmy threw so many accurate punches. I don't know which one was the one that really busted him up, but they were clean punches. Well, I think on that replay, just the way that uh, Dorsey winced, it might well have been that left hand at the very beginning of that replay. But uh, De La Hoya is now... 8-0 in the pro ranks with an easier stoppage than even he might have expected against Troy Dorsey. He was very disappointed having uh, not the opportunity to go back out for the second round because of the cut. Oscar De La Hoya from Los Angeles, California, showing just a sample of his wares here. One round of action at the Thomas and Mac Arena to move his pro record to 8-0 with seven knockouts. And let's go up now to James Brown. All right, Tim, thank you very much. You know, as you mentioned, Tim Ryan, uh, Oscar De La Hoya said this was a fight that he wanted. There were those who were a little concerned that maybe Oscar De La Hoya was taking on a bit too much by fighting a guy like Troy Dorsey, who at least will put a lot of pressure on him. 
but it was clear that Dorsey needed just a few more weapons in his battle with Oscar De La Hoya, namely the two weapons that were planted firmly on the canvas. So the march continues for the young man who is without a doubt destined for stardom. Not only does he look good, not only does he talk well, but he fights an awfully good game as well. So Oscar De La Hoya moves to 8-0 and as he continues to move along. Says that he is absolutely not problemed at all, but he's about the fact that they're keeping a very aggressive fight schedule for him. Right now, let's head back down to our ring announcer for the official decision, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, after suffering a very severe laceration to the right eye, Troy Dorsey was advised by the physician ringside, chief ringside physician, Dr. Flip Amansky, that he should no longer continue. The advice was passed on to referee Mitch Halpern, who had to call a halt to the bout. At the end of the first round, the winner by TKO, his record now, 8-0, 7 KOs to his credit, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. All right, so Oscar De La Hoya, very, very impressive, a one-round decision. Boy, I tell you, Troy Dorsey. He came back over here, as Tim Ryan mentioned, just after in a, being involved in a kickboxing uh, a situation over in Paris, France, four weeks ago. Perhaps he should have stayed over there. So standing by with the winner now to talk about why and how he executed the decision so quickly, Tim Ryan with De La Hoya. Thank you, James. Here's Oscar De La Hoya in his eighth professional fight. Uh, not getting much of a chance to show our large TV KO audience what he can really do because it only went one round. But it looked to us like it was a left hand. Do you remember what punch uh, opened up the cut? Yes, it was a left uppercut who really did the damage. Um, it was a terrible cut. I mean, uh, Troy Dorsey wanted to continue, but it was just an ugly cut. It was very, very large over his eye. And, um, you know, I always say that opponents shouldn't really get hurt up in the ring. And, uh, but Troy Dorsey, I mean, he has a lot of heart, and I give him a lot of credit. Oscar, I saw you at the end of the round. You were kind of waving your arms in disgust in the direction of Dorsey. Were you upset at him or the fact that they weren't stopping it right then? I was upset that they wouldn't stop it because um, I saw that the cut was bleeding tremendously and uh, I saw that the cut was really uh, affecting him in the fight. So, um, I mean, I was trying to make signs like, gosh, stop the fight. No, please stop the fight for his own sake, for his own good, you know. And um, I'm just happy that nobody came out really, really hurt. Well, we did see a sample of, uh, of your ability, uh, Oscar, even though it was only three minutes worth. Here's a look back at the punch we think caused the cut. See if you agree. Yes, right here. I was throwing the uppercut. Because that's, that's the one that really did it. Um, that's, that's that kind of just got him and opened it up. And uh, he, he was a, a fighter who just came in. No defense, just was coming in with his head. And uh, we were working on throwing uppercuts and, and uh, trying to, to knock him out with an uppercut. So uh, that's what we did, and uh, it worked perfectly. Well, Gil Clancy was very impressed with your side-to-side -side movement, your accuracy of punching, and I think everybody agrees that you have a bright future ahead of you. Some of your people, and I think you yourself, have said you'd like to talk about the possibility of six titles in six different weight divisions. Is that uh, what you hope for? That's what I hope for, but right now we got to get that first one and uh, take it one day at a time. Um, we really can't rush things. I'm only 20 years of age, and uh, we got a lot of time ahead of us, and uh, I'm going to make it the best years of my life, and uh, hopefully I can make history in boxing. A lot of people looking in out there may not be aware that you have other goals as well. You told us yesterday that you like to be an architect, and I'm sure a lot of fans are saying, hey, that's a great goal for any professional athlete to have, to do something other than just be a boxing champion. Most definitely. Um, I, what I believe in is that uh, my boxing career is not going to last very long. I might break a hand now. I might break an arm tomorrow. And uh, what do I have uh, that backs me up is only education. So uh, I really got to go back into my studies, go into college, and uh, continue my degree in, uh, in architecture because um, that's something very, very important to myself. Well, good luck to you, Oscar. You're going to be fun to watch in the years ahead, and I know everybody's going to be following your career very closely, hoping maybe to see history made with six titles. Hopefully. Thank you very much. Oscar De La Hoya.